Hey everybody, welcome back. Today's a very special episode. This is the Mortgage Mindset 2.0. We're actually at our new Mindset Media Center uh, located right in Huntington, New York. This week I brought on somebody very special, somebody who I actually grew up with in my childhood. Um, his name is Rob. Rob, thanks for coming on today, brother. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Robert Echeverria. And, uh, Tell us a little bit about yourself, Rob. Uh, I've known Dean for, you know, 10, 12 plus years at this point. Uh, I'm in the car business. I'm a finance manager at Acura of Bayshore. Um, grew up in Huntington, New York. Came here at six years old from Puerto Rico. And, you know, it's a pleasure to be here today. Yeah, no, I appreciate you coming on, man. It's really, uh, it's an honor to have somebody who I, you know, grew up with in, you know, obviously our, our childhood, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old. And, you know, growing up like we did, not that we grew up in a bad place, but to do some of the stuff we did growing up and, you know, to have some of the times that we had and to now see, you know, you extremely successful in your business. And, you know, I've seen success in my business. Uh, you know, it's really awesome that we could uh, collaborate together and really come here today and, you know, speak about some of the stuff that we've, you know, gone through over the years. Yeah, um, absolutely. I wanted to speak about a few topics today. Uh, you know, the first thing that I wanted to you know, bring up is, is how we kind of grew up together. I know we did some, you know, some crazy stuff. And, <laughs> you know, obviously, at some point, you realize that you have to become successful in, in life and, you know, not just in business, which you've also done. You know, give us a little insight, uh, a little insight on, uh, give us a little insight on, you know, your journey and how you, you know, when you realize, you know, I have to buckle down now and, you know, start, you know, really working towards what I want to accomplish in life. Whew. Well, listen, back when we were, you know, feels like ages ago, but not too long ago, we were super young, and I think we made every wrong decision possible, and to see you flourish so much in your business at this point, you know, going from, you know, working a couple days with your dad a week to literally, I think I see you on the phone 24-7, definitely, uh, definitely, definitely hardworking, hardworking dude, but... Um, Myself, I mean, from getting in trouble every day and, you know, being arrested super you early didn't, You didn't grow up easy, no. you know, which molds you into the person that you become. So it's kind of, I guess when you look back, it's, you almost feel like it's, it's, everything happens for a reason. It's kind of good how we grew up, like, even though, you know, we grew up in different situations, my father always showed me tough love, never going to hand you anything. You got to work for it no matter what situation I'm in that's not your situation nah, you, know, you came from a little bit tougher of a background of course and you know I'm sure you could speak on how that made you into the person you are you know now not in just in business but as, as a father you know and and I think uh, you know I commend you for that of course for you know obviously at some point realizing I have to and me me both you know me, me as well at some point we have to <laughs> yeah, you know, figure you out what path down. we're gonna go down yeah Absolutely. of course buckle down um, honestly, it was, uh, definitely, you know, my, what was the turning up. point, you know, in your life that you decided, you know, now I have to, you know, do this. Well, my, my upbringing definitely wasn't the easiest, you know, I've seen other people where it was definitely a little bit more troubling than myself, but, uh, you know, sometimes parents couldn't make ends meet, uh, very early on. My dad got, uh, hurt at his job. I think when I was turned 18, that's when I actually got into the car business. Um, he hurt his back. He couldn't work. Uh, we needed somebody that was going to be able to provide and put uh, money on the table. I got a really great opportunity. I took a shot in the dark, and I remember I walked into Huntington Honda and uh, just tried to get my foot in the door in the car business. You worked, you, even before that, you always grinded from when we were young, you know, even 16, 17. I remember you always hustled doing different things. Yeah, know, no, so. definitely. At 12 years old, I was actually a dishwasher. I never, I'll never forget uh, how much I didn't like it. I remember the, what turned me down was uh, I spoke fluent Spanish and fluent English, and I asked the guy if I could be a busboy because I was I always felt like I was good at interacting with people. Yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, he told me, no, go back downstairs and go wash dishes. That's what you're good at. And uh, from then on, I think two days later, after that I got my fire finish, under I, you, definitely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I quit, and I did landscaping for a little bit, and as soon as I got the opportunity to be a busboy at a restaurant... I took that and I, you know, I never looked back. It was a good customer service industry and uh, it took me, it took those skills that I learned there being a, you know, food runner, bartender, 
waiter, and then I took that into the levels. Business. No matter what business you're in, you Absolutely. start somewhere. It's levels. You start. You you realize that I have to grow and level up, and you take the next step. No matter what business you're in, and in life, you know most importantly. So again, that's why it's great to see that you know you in the position you're in now, with the family, with your business. You know, being as successful as you are. Um, Again, I, you know, that's that's really exciting to see. That's that's great stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, uh, again, you know, even uh, even back to what I was saying, you know, at 18, my my father got injured, and once I got in the car business and I stepped foot on the sales floor, um, I remember doing 18 cars my first month, and from then on, I was doing 25. 18 cars. cars. Yeah, 18 yeah, cars. I, wish I closed 18 loans every month. <laughs> it was uh, definitely uh, difficult. I had some amazing mentors along the way. Uh, what got you into the car business, actually? That's something else I wanted to, you know, kind of talk about. I know you said kind of how you started in the business, but what actually made you get into the business? Was there a mentor? Was there somebody you looked up to that was successful? What actually made you decide to get into that into that industry? Nelson Rivera, he's a general sales manager at Nissan Westbury. He actually, I had messaged him. I always saw that, uh, you know, he was a young kid. I think he bought his first house very, very, very early on. And I was like, wow, this kid is so successful. I would love to do something like that. Yeah, of course. And uh, once I called him, he said, you know, he said, come in. I actually went on an interview to Huntington Honda, not knowing he worked there. I had hit him, I had hit him up. And he didn't answer. And then I went there and I saw him. He was like, hey, I was just going to get back to your message. That's always the answer. And I remember I went there in a polo shirt and some jeans and some white Nikes. And I remember him telling me, go home and come back and get a suit and I'll get you the job. I and love that guy. Nelson, wherever you are, man, I commend you for that. He, he that's was, what I tell everybody I work with. He was so good by doing that because I got the job on the spot. Um, I got paid handsomely to start, you know, nice. being a technology specialist, which was going awesome. over the vehicles with customers. Yep. And then again, uh, I got on the sales floor very early on and it was sink or swim. And I definitely, uh, I think I was swimming pretty well. I think any sales job is sink or swim, you know, as we realize. <laughs> You're telling me, yeah, Which definitely. is why mo most people, I'm not going to say take the easy route. You know, some people go to college, they have something that they want to be when they get older, whether it's your parent that, you know, was that or what, whatever the case may be. But I feel like there's no other business like the businesses that we're in, you know, sales, because you have to fend for yourself. You might have a good team behind you, but like you said, it's either sink or swim. If you can't deliver and close business and build relationships with people, um, you know, you're not going to swim. You're going to sink. You know, Absolutely. Opinion, I so. mean, college is like always a, it's a safe bet. You know, somebody thinks they have something planned out and they want to go that route and that's fine. You know, yeah, that's fine for some no. people. But then when 100%. you change your mind when you're there, or you, it's not what you thought of. Which a lot of people do, especially nowadays with all the technology and social media. Of course, you, you know, can do a lot of things from you can do a lot yeah. of things from home. You know, you could take classes online. You could you could do so many things, but it still may not be what you want to do once exactly. you're in that field. Like for myself, I didn't even have that opportunity. I didn't do great in high school. I was definitely not a good kid in high school. I'll tell you that much. And uh, for myself, you know, I needed quick money, fast money, and I wanted to do it the right way because I could have done it a million other ways because where I grew up, trust me, if I wanted to make fast money, I 100% could have been making some very fast you money. You made the right decision. You became a man quick and you realized that this is how I'm going to you know, earn my living the right way. Absolutely. And again, to see you as successful as you are, like I said several times, that's, that's really you know, <laughs> something that I commend. So listen, something else that I wanted to talk about being in you know, your position, I know you're not just in sales at this point, you know, you oversee a lot of stuff at the dealership and a lot of people look up to you, um, you know, in your industry now. Um, what do you think, and I could tell from, or I could say from my experience, you know, leading a team of people and, you know, trying to motivate them every day and to try to make people become like you is definitely a challenge. Um, what motivates you every day to, you know, lead and be a leader, um, you know, in your business, you know, where you are? Uh, I'd be lying if I said, uh, you know, it didn't have to do with, uh, the money I make at my job, which is everybody, of course, you yeah. know, um, you know, once I had my son, I think, uh, it was a huge turn for me. Yeah, of course. You know, I for had me as well. That's what, that's what sparked the fire under me when I found out I was having a, a baby, you know, that was the, it was, I didn't know what to think, but it really pushed me to really level, level up and. Of course, you, know, you, you know, having, uh, you know, with, with my sons, once I found out my girl was pregnant, I think like immediately a switch turned in my head and I had to, it was, I had to do more. No I choice. had to get more because you want to, you want to give him something you never had. And, 
you know, again, uh, not that I didn't have anything, but I didn't have a lot. And it was okay because he has everything and some on top. You should see this kid's room. <laughs> I mean, every little toy you can think of, every little fire truck. If he wants a, a scooter or a car or any an SUV to ride for the day, he'll have it, you know, and, and he does. So... Um, it's amazing that you can do that f for him. You absolutely. Know, so it, it was family. Yeah. That My family really uh, changed uh, a lot about, you know, me uh, pushing forward with that. But as far as leading a team goes, um, uh, I just went into finance two months ago. and Because you were in sales for a while. You know, you made a lot of your money in sales by yourself. And that's where it's like some people have to make that decision sometimes. You know, even in my business or really in any sales business, do I want to worry about myself and build my business because a lot of the time, that's where you make the most amount of money and of see course. the most amount of success. Um, but then there's always that dream, which I have that and had that dream of always helping other people become successful, you know, showing them the right path in life and in business. And, um, you know, you, you were speaking a little bit about that. So what, um, uh, how do you, again, how do you push these people to, you know, be as successful as you are and you know, what are some of the things that you... I have a phenomenal sales team at my job, and I commend every single one of them. And, you know, even from when I was on the sales floor, you know, I was doing 35 to 45 cars every month. I finished last year with over 350 units sold. and um, Top dog. Yeah, that, I, I, you know, I was doing good. I was doing good. I actually took a step back in terms of pay to go into finance um, because typically a salesman won't do that many units. Yeah. So... I gained an extra day, so I have now Sundays off, and I gained an extra day with my son, so I definitely, you know... It's the one thing about your business, because even the, my business is great. We work, you know, morning you to night, rest. week, yeah. but there's no, like, at, if you're not at the dealership at those times, on the holidays, on those important days, like, that's where you have those big sales. You get a lot of that business those days, so you have no choice but to be there, but now, I guess, going into finance, it gives you some more flexibility. It you know. gives me a little bit more leeway in terms of time. And, you know, one thing you were saying about, you know, leading uh, leading a team, a lot of the guys do ask me, you know, some questions. And we have some new guys on the floor that I see a lot of myself in them. And, you know, just scoping them out and looking at their habits and how their customer interactions, there's always so much more you can do. One thing I told myself when I got in the car business is that I will never be like the Joe Schmo across the desk. I remember I bought my first car and I think it was the worst experience ever in my life. And I was like, I will never be like that guy. I want somebody to walk out of here and not only buy a car, because buying a car is great and everything, but yeah. it's an experience. You, you don't sell the car. You, you, know, you do sell the car and you sell the place, but it's the experience. Somebody will come back to you. And that's how you get those referrals. And you know, that's how you up yourself from like 20 cars to 30 cars. And you, you build a book and people will you know, come back and call you and just check up on you. I have customers to this day, six years, seven years later, they call me like, hey, Merry Christmas, or that FaceTime me at 5.30 in the morning, can you help me figure out this issue with my radio? And I take the call gladly because of that's course. what I signed up for and that's 100%. what I want to show them throughout years of their path. I didn't just sell you a car. I'm going to be there for the whole ride of your car. And then after, if you want to come see me again or you want to send me somebody, the door's always open to give me a call. I always take that call. Of course. It starts with, like, if you see those qualities in the salesman that you have with you, then it's easy for you to want to motivate them and be successful, you know, and make them successful. So that's exciting that, you know, you have a young group of guys that, you know, want to, you know, see success in that business and in life. You know, it starts outside of the business. You know, a lot of people think that you come to work and it just all happens there. But, you know, making the right decisions in life, which we learned, obviously, growing up, um, you know, that translate into your business and into the success that you're going to see. So... Of course, and it's not always a picture perfect. You know, I have uh, I have some guys that I don't want to say are a lost cause, but uh, you would tell them something, and the, it's just like somebody else, anybody else. They'll pretend that they're listening, and they'll just make the same error. And you don't do it just to criticize them. You don't do it just to think you're better than them. You genuinely want to help. You're already you care. You're no, already I I, underst I understand that definitely. And of me course. being a guy that was I was constantly outselling everybody by over you know 10, 15 cars. It's not about me criticizing you. It's not about me thinking I'm better than you. It's about me genuinely want to help you. I'm going to help you. And in turn, that's going to help me. You're going to bring more units to the store and you're going to help my dealership. And, you know, once you become a manager, I'm sure you can, uh, you can test for this. It's, it's, it becomes about the store as well, not just yourself, not just your pocket. It of becomes course. about... It's all a reflection on you. Of course. 100%. So, no, that's, that's, that's awesome, man. I'm glad to hear that, you know, you have a good team, you know, around you and... Not everybody makes it in our business, especially sales. Definitely you not. Don't, not everybody makes it. It's not easy, you know, what we do. So 
speak, speaking more about that, you know, this world has been so crazy with, you know, not just the economy and, you know, in my business, the interest rates and, you know, interest rates kind of correlate with every business because in your business, people are borrowing money to buy cars. So their rates are higher, their payments are higher. You know, what's your take on that right now? Do you see less people coming to, you know, buy cars or, you know, do they not care about this crazy economy that's, oh, that's, they care. that's happening? They, they definitely yeah. care. The thing about a car is like um, if your car breaks down, you need one. You know, we, we are in New York. No this choice. is Long Island. You have yeah. to get around and, you know, getting around by bus or by train is definitely difficult. So someone will take the higher rate because they know they have to. Hopefully it doesn't stay like this. I don't know what's know. going on with this. Girl. <laughs> you know, I just got, uh, I just finished. And you just bought a house. Yeah, exactly. I just, I just helped you with your first with house. Yeah. I was yeah. honored to help you with your first Thank house. You. Of course. Oh uh, yeah. You were honored and it was great. But, uh, this, the, the, you know, the rate is high, but it's fine. You know, the, the rates aren't high. They're still historically low. But for good us, point. you know, what good point, but considering, you know, two years ago and for us, though, forget it though. Cause anybody who's, our age, you know, right. in their 20s, we, we didn't go through 2008 or prior to 2008 where I guess the whole world kind of went through, you know, challenging times. You know, people seem to forget that, you know, prior to 2000, you know, in the 80s and 90s, rates were 10, 15, 20 percent on mortgages. And those are good rates. Um, and then people, you know, that you speak to nowadays, when you tell them that, they say, well, you know, the houses were less money back then. Everything was less. Well, we're making five, 10, 15 times what we were making back then. So it all kind of goes with each other, you know, higher home prices, but people are making more money, um, you know, nowadays. But it is definitely challenge, challenging for anybody who's a first time home buyer. You know, most people don't earn the type of money that, you know, you and other successful people earn in their business. And, you know, for the average person, it's tough to make that mortgage payment. You know, you buy a $500,000 house and you have a three or $4,000 payment, you know, it's, it's challenging to make that payment. But you know um, what, um, that I definitely, you know, with, and you know, I looked around before I even, uh, you know, you, you definitely took care of me because, you know, I was getting quoted by other people at eight, nine, 10%. That's rates were that high. I was doing loans at 10, 11% for friends of mine that, People think banks make up the interest rates. We don't make the rates up. Of course you know, not. Rates are based off of something called the 10-year treasury. It's the okay. stock market. You know, they go up, rates go up. They go down, rates go down. So, it, listen, it's been a, a, a different time, but I think now people have started to adjust. You know, they realize that we always have to buy houses. You know, people that pay rent are paying 100% interest, in my opinion. You're paying somebody else's mortgage. So, you know, whether you have to find somebody to buy the house with you, get a co-signer, do it with your friend. I think it's always a great time to buy real estate, in my opinion, you know, to get that under your belt at least and, you know, work towards the next goal in life. I'm glad, uh, actually, that, you know, you brought that up because I feel like, you know, I told you I was going to rent and you yeah. told me exactly what you just said. Especially what you're going to pay in rent. I mean, that's ridiculous. I, when I started crunching the numbers, uh, I, I was like, wow, he's genuinely correct. And then, you know, you took care of me the well, whole people don't realize that whole like, process. like you were saying like people don't realize you know you go to rent you got to pay the first month's rent the security and a broker fee so you're paying eight nine ten thousand to get into an apartment but on a house you could put three and a half percent down or three percent down maybe it's a few thousand more than renting but then you could finance the closing cost there's things you can do with the seller you know and then and, it's yours yeah then it's yours so you're paying yeah. down something you own and something that you work for so it's a different feeling. I don't. Doesn't matter what you say. It was the. I think closing it. to me was the one of the best feelings in the world. It was such a big accomplishment. And it is. Again, I commend you for that because I if if I hadn't talked to you and worked with you, I probably would be renting right now, and I don't think I'd be as happy as I am. You know, there's not even a chance you could be as happy because every time you come home, you own something. You know, we all, and I wasn't. You know, I'm I'm one to speak. You know, growing up, and becoming successful at a young age, we all you know, overspend on things. We make decisions that we might not have made, you know, which we realize down the line. But anytime you invest money into real estate, it's it's not only is it like a forced savings, right. but it's going to appreciate. You're going to pay down the balance, have more equity. You could borrow against it in the future, buy other properties. 
you know, it's a home run when it comes to, you know, real estate. We used so. to spend money on the most ridiculous things. You were, you know that? You, you, we were I spending know. money on yeah. everything every day. And, you know, thinking back on it, you know, if I could go back a little bit. Yeah, forget it. If I could go back, I would I would do so many things different. I would put so much more away than, you know, we were we were going out and spending a, a lot of money that we, you know, we, we shouldn't have. We'd be doing. I don't know if we could talk about too many of those instances <laughs> on, on the mortgage mindset, but we definitely had some great times. Yes, and yes. You have to go through those times to make better decisions. And if we didn't go through those times, we might not be where we are now. I agree. You know, so If we didn't make those mistakes, you know, I don't think it would have led us to where we are now. You have to make mistakes. Yeah. It, it's, a good, uh, it's good to lead into our next and last topic. You know, what would you have, I wouldn't say have done differently, but if you can go back, you know, 5, 10, 15 years, you know, is there something that you would have done differently or, you know, did you think that everything that has happened in your life was, you know, that was the plan? That was God's plan? Um, if I had to really go back, I mean, to say that I was like, you know, an uh, outstanding employee out of, you know, at a lot of the places I was, I think I would, uh, I would go ahead and take a step back and listen to more people and, you know, take the advice that, you know, my general manager, my general sales manager, my finance director yeah. would have gave me, you know, in terms of just like showing up and being there. And then when I am there, you know, going at it a hundred percent that's it because i think i would have what i'm doing now i would have done it a few years sooner i feel the same way though you know i work hard in my business but i feel like if i did it four or five years sooner when i got into the business right. you know it'd be a different conversation but it doesn't really work that way you can't really look at what we did and didn't do you know we had now but you grew up in the business so you, for, for yourself you know if you, you knew all the all the ins and outs well i saw people that were successful in the business okay. and it kind of pushed me to you know i want more than that you know i want that and more and i was raised you know with tough love right. um i was always told you have to work for everything you have in life and you know i appreciate now that that's how i was brought up because you know like we always say, if, if, if everything was handed to you or if things might have been different, then we wouldn't be where we are now. And we wouldn't be able to instill and show other people what we show them because we wouldn't have those qualities. You know? Right, and uh, you, you wouldn't have a leg to stand on. If you it. had it all you know, given to you what, you, what are you really showing someone? You got that for, you know, you, that was already given to you. You didn't exactly. have to work hard for it. Exactly. You know, you, I, you're day and night. As to my, you know, myself as well, I, w I was always picking up my phone 24-7. You know, days off, holidays, I was always taking calls. I was always trying to sell a car or fix an issue or fix this person's issue. It's, it's crazy. It's like a nonstop business. That's, sales, that's is our, business. sales is nonstop. That's our business. <laughs> but uh, listen, I, I really appreciate you coming and taking the time today to obviously sit down and, you know, speak about some of the stuff that obviously we've gone through together and that you've gone through in life and, you know, how you got, you know, as far as you have in your business and in life so far. And, you know, like I said before, um, it's, it's really great to see, you know, somebody who I grew up with that, again, we've done some crazy stuff together, you know, over the years, um, you know, again, be as successful as you are um, now. And um, hopefully uh, we could do this again sometime. And I appreciate you coming on the show today, brother. Thank you. Uh, you know, I look forward to you having me again. And uh, it, it was a pleasure to be here. And, you know, I'm glad to see how far you've come. And this is a really, really nice spot that you have here. And, uh, you know, the Mindset Media Center. This I really hope all... you, you, you keep going with this because new you know, beginning. You got a good team here. And uh, I, I think you're going to do really, really well. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you coming on today.